Video games have a subtle way of making us appreciate the little things in life, but they're also able to make us be just a little less morbid about life and death in general. Sometimes game developers have to insert a bit of dark humor into our favorite character's ultimate endings just to lighten up the mood. Before we begin, ring that bell and subscribe to The Gamer so you never miss a beat. Also, a big thank you to Deron Howe for his winning title submission of the 8 stupidest way to die in a video game. Blades of Grass the Smurfs have been a cultural phenomenon since 1958 when the Belgian comic franchise was created. People couldn't get enough of the tiny blue creatures who lived in mushroom-shaped houses hidden in the forest, and there were over a hundred Smurf characters created to emphasize their very human characteristics. But just like Gargamel could never capture the Smurfs even with the creation of Smurfette, it was never going to be a successful video game franchise no matter how hard they tried to make it so. A company by the name of Coleco decided to try to lure children into loving video games by cleverly disguising a terribly difficult game into something they adored. The game was released in 1982 for the ColecoVision and Atari 2600, and there's probably a reason you've never heard of the ColecoVision, because Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle was a gigantic failure. Although we'd like to mention it somehow was praised by a few reviewers, like the one at Creative Computing Video and Arcade Games. But most critics warned people the game was frustrating until the moment you learn to land jumps. And here it lands the number one spot for stupidest ways to die. First of all, you're about three inches tall, so life is already difficult enough for a smurf. But in this game, you can't time your jumps right. You can be killed by fences, bats, and even tiny blades of grass. Yeah, that's right. Life isn't fair, and if you get frustrated easily, you definitely shouldn't pick up this game anytime soon other than for nostalgia's sake. Five minutes into the game and we're cursing and just wanting to let Gargamel have Smurfette forever. It also made us look at Blades of Grass differently. Jumping into a bowl of warm soup After spending hours playing Super Mario Odyssey, there's no denying it's the best game we've played all year. We're not even shocked by the fact that it sold more than 2 million copies worldwide within the first three days of release. It just makes so much sense to us. It's a great mix of nostalgia for older players, yet it's simple enough for new fans to pick up fairly quickly. It just has something for everyone. The bosses are challenging, but not overly so. And most of them can be beat by the first go-around, although there are a few exceptions, like Robo Brood. But hey, at least they saved the best for last. But here's where things get interesting. You know how there are some amazing enemies which you can possess with Cappy? Of course you do. But what made us laugh throughout the entire game were the ridiculous ways in which you could die. Go swimming and you could run out of oxygen jump on a cactus in your dead meat, or even freeze to death in a chilly tundra. But the dumbest way to die has to be deciding to jump into a hot bowl of soup as Chef Mario. We like soup just as much as you do, but in no way do we want to go to such extreme measures as jumping into a burning bowl of soup four times our size to meet our maker for a power moon. If you've made it to the Luncheon Kingdom and didn't discover you need to possess a lava bubble to survive the bowling hot soup, then maybe we've warned you before a disastrous date with death. Feel free to thank us later. We'll take pizza and puppies as payment. Thank you! Romantic Affairs with a Fugitive Asari Alien Mass Effect Andromeda definitely wasn't received well at first because they decided to push a product which wasn't quite ready for the market. We still can't get over all those horrible character customization glitches. We were prepared for something good to come from Mass Effect Andromeda after the Mass Effect 3 ending fiasco. The ending disrespected the most invested players of the series, as we were led to believe that each decision we make is important and game-altering. Well, guess what? It wasn't. So when you get to the end of Mass Effect 3 only to discover you're given three final choices, which refuse to elaborate in any serious way about what happens in the galaxy, it made the whole Mass Effect series and the decisions you made throughout the game kind of feel pointless. And if the fanbase of Mass Effect had hopes for Andromeda, they were quickly dashed by critics' reviews of the game when it first came out, with its numerous UI issues and glitches. By now, most of the game has been smoothed out, giving players a better outlook for the game's future. But yeah, we all still love Mass Effect, even if there was one thing we weren't anticipating in Mass Effect 2. You had an opportunity to romance Morinth, an Asari suffering from a rare genetic disorder. She's basically an alien succubus who kills her mates while also joining mines with them. This makes her smarter, more powerful, and even deadlier after she seduces her prey. Sounds kinky. Because of this, she spends centuries as a fugitive, only surviving and narrowly escaping capture by using her cunning charm and ability to manipulate people's minds. Shepard has the ability to talk to Morinth in the game, where she claims that she experienced immense pleasure with her previous partners, but nothing unusual happened during their time together. She suggests the commander is too strong-willed to die if they were to join together. She wants them to couple up together after they finish the suicide mission as a sort of celebration. Sign me up! 
Shepard is able to choose to mate with her if the mission is completed, but it turns out he may have just survived one suicide mission to be led straight to death's door by Morinth. Crabs With the release of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy last year, players everywhere were able to relive their glory days with one of their favorite platformers. Along with the game, we were also able to relive the numerous challenges and hilarious game over scenes Crash Bandicoot had to offer. We also got a challenging game where the controls felt a bit more difficult than we remembered. If you're bad at timing, don't play the new Crash Bandicoot unless you're prepared to fail over and over and over and over again. One of the most hilarious ways Crash can die is by spinning at the wrong time and then being killed by one or sometimes two crabs. Death by crabs is not the way someone wants to go out, especially not a hero who has to defeat Dr. Neo Cortex. But hey, at least it isn't the crabs you dirty-minded people are thinking of, although there actually is a cure for that type of crabs. The best part of Crash Bandicoot is how shocked he is when he gets killed off by the numerous elements in the game. We lovingly refer to it as a whoa death moment, because you know, he obviously gets thrown off the screen and then loudly shouts, whoa, while doing so. Crash's famous last words will forever be, whoa, but he always comes back as insistent to finish the level as the player who just failed it. Chomped in half by puny piranha plants. The mere mention of Battletoads has me seeing red because we're still believing it's one of the most difficult games on the planet and there's a reason for its difficulty. In 1991, the video game rental market was crushing the video game industry because players were getting so good they could spend the $5 to rent a game and have it beat within the 3-day rental limit. The gaming industry had to resort to making games harder so players would spend the 60 bucks to purchase cartridges. Otherwise, they were losing money, and in came Battletoads at this opportune moment. If you ask anyone about the game, only a small percentage can admit to beating the game in its entirety. Probably 0.01% of the gaming population. The game was a beat-em-up style that fit in with a generation who adored the Double Dragon and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, although it ended up having a smaller underground cult following since it featured more violence, a scandalous dominatrix villain, and punk characters with hilarious names like Zitz, Pimple, and Rash. The game actually ended up being a big enough hit to get a spin-off on the Game Boy and a sequel for the Super Nintendo. If you've forgotten all about Battletoads, we don't blame you. But there's one thing we won't soon forget, and that's all the exotic ways the three intergalactic mutant warriors could die in the game. But we definitely have to say one of the dumbest ways to die is getting chomped in half by piranha plants. Because this isn't a frickin' Mario game, and the plants aren't even remotely near the size of the piranha plants in the Mario franchise. Plus, you're an intergalactic space warrior who can enlarge your hands and feet to beat up enemies, but you can't take down a puny piranha plant, which is sort of weak and embarrassing. Oh, and it's only level 2 of Battletoads, so just imagine how difficult it will be when you finally get to the TerraTubes level. Exhaustion We have a lot of things to thank the Oregon Trail for, but we'll mainly thank it for pretending to be educational, so our teachers would let us play it in computer class. We also learned how to type, so there's no judgment, because it was one of our favorite classics in the 80s and 90s. Oh, Oregon Trail, let us count the ways we love thee. Sorry, we forgot we're not in a Shakespearean drama, so we'll get right to the point here. Did you know how many weird facts we learned from the Oregon Trail? A lot. Your journey on the Oregon Trail would have been similar to the one made at the time, and the diseases you or your loved ones could die from were also problems from 1811 to 1840. The Oregon Trail was 2,170 miles long, and the game included all the stops you would actually see if you didn't die quickly, which were Fort Kearney, Independence Rock, Chimney Rock, Fort Laramie, South Pass, and the Columbia River. Did you know what else we learned from Oregon Trail? There are plenty of stupid ways to die in the mid-1830s. If you broke your arm or your leg, then you're as good as dead, so you better start creating a custom epitaph. That being said, the absolute dumbest way to die was from exhaustion. Some of us had trouble walking 12 feet to our refrigerator, so if a person could die from anything in the 1800s, it would have been from exhaustion. The fact we were allowed to embark on the Oregon Trail with the least amount of supplies humanly possible with an entire family seems completely unfair. Even if they didn't have vaccines in the 1800s, they did have the cure for exhaustion called naps, right? Killed by Mutts Growing up playing the Legend of Zelda franchise, we probably discovered there were plenty of opportunities to get killed in dumb ways. We can't even count the amount of times Link plummeted from a high elevation to his death or that time we forgot a blue Bakaplin, was not the same as the red one, and he killed us in one shot. Yes, it seems there are many, many ways to meet your untimely demise in the Zelda franchise. How about exploding yourself in Breath of the Wild during lightning storms? If you carry metal weapons and armor, which attract electricity in a lightning storm, you're gonna have a bad time. 
You know what game we really appreciated? Link's Awakening. Why do you ask? Well, we fondly appreciated the little animals called mutts, found around Maid Village, which look completely harmless unless you have one heart left and attack a mutt. Once one of the dogs have been provoked, watch out, because it will try to bite Link causing damage, and since you're already at low health, it will be game over for Link all too soon. Dogs play a pretty significant role and appear in almost every game, so let's just be nice to them next time. And whatever you do, don't use magic power or the magic rod to kill them. We guess the lesson Nintendo wants us to learn here is to be nice to dogs and other domesticated animals, or else they'll probably kill you if you're running around with low health. Explosive Penguin Egg Many of us grew up playing Mortal Kombat, even though it had quite the reputation for high levels of blood, gore, violence, and those brutal fatalities. Finish him. The game basically led to the creation of the ESRB video game rating system and earned itself worldwide attention in the 1990s. It has been criticized by politicians and other critics for an unrestrained use of violence, since it was one of the earliest games to do so. The franchise was even subject to numerous court cases and was censored or even banned in some countries. But nevertheless, the world progressed and Mortal Kombat kept gaining momentum. It's a series which for years contained secret characters, games, and other easter eggs like the hidden NPC Reptile and Jade, who was added as a hidden enemy. You could even play Pong in Mortal Kombat 2, and in Mortal Kombat 3 there was a hidden game of Galaga. But Mortal Kombat has always been known for the fatalities. Some of them are so hilarious and grotesque that we just have to close our eyes and look in another direction. It was the animality moves that we really enjoyed in the series though, which actually started off as a fan rumor and by Mortal Kombat 3 had actually taken shape. Animalities is when your character could transform into an animal using a finishing move to kill off your opponent. We've saved the best for last. Scorpion, who you would assume turns into a scorpion, actually becomes a penguin who lays explosive eggs to kill his enemy by blowing them up. It's bizarre, but it works for Mortal Kombat because it's just strange enough. And the elephant scene where the skin is blown off an opponent by loudly blowing the trunk in the direction of your enemy, well, we just don't have words for that ridiculous death scene. Some things are just too much, even for Mortal Kombat. We hope you enjoyed the list we compiled of 8 humorous video game deaths you've probably experienced yourself. Did we miss any? Which dumb ways to die have been your personal favorite in a video game? Tell us in the comment section below. Thanks for sticking it out with the gamer, and if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel because we love to hear your opinions and we hope you'll join us for our next video.